Welcome back, welcome back, any and all. Glad you all could come back to hear the word. Not only hear the word, be doers of the word. Glory be to a higher. I sure hope when you woke up this morning, you told Father God, thank you. It is he that woke us up. We didn't wake ourselves up. No, we can't do that. We can't even breathe on our own, believe it or not. And I sure hope you told your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Uh, hallelujah. I hope you all are saved and have given your life to Christ Jesus. Because if you haven't, what are you waiting for? Only Jesus died on the cross for all our sins, not any other. And our Father's looking for you guys to grab hold. He is looking for you. He's looking for his children to come and lay their lives down and give it to him. And seek him in sincerity and truth. Right? Father God wants a personal relationship with each and every one of his children. He loves us all. He has no respect to persons, but you need to be repentant. You need to repent and turn from your wicked ways and receive Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. Today, you need to read God's word daily, preferably the King James Version of the Bible. Go down on your knees in prayer. Cry out to the Father in sincerity and truth. And don't stop crying out to you until you hear from him. Not only will he answer you, he'll begin to teach you the word of God. It takes time. Excuse me. He is always perfecting that in us, but we got to give it, we got to lay it down and let him work on us, right? Hallelujah. With that being said, I love you all to love the Lord. That's why I tell you the truth. And Father, God loves you more. And today we're still in the book of Jeremiah. We're in chapter 32, which has three chapters to it. Jeremiah buys the field. Jeremiah questions the Lord. And the Lord explain, explains about the field. All right, before we begin our reading, though, we're going to say a prayer for children of all ages. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for every day. Thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Father, for providing for us. Thank you, Father, for teaching us how to treat others the way that we want to be treated with love and respect. Thank you, Father, for... Give us parents that love us and siblings that we love too. And Father, we thank you because you are our Heavenly Father and we love you. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, now we pray. Amen. Amen indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go into our reading. Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah by Sophia. The Lord spoke to me in the 10th year that Zedekiah was king of Judah, which was the 18th year that Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylonia. At that time, the Babylonian army had surrounded Jerusalem, and I was in the prison at the courtyard of the palace guards. Zedekiah had ordered me to be held there because I told everyone that the Lord had said, I am the Lord, and I am about to let the king of Babylonia conquer Jerusalem. King Zedekiah will be captured and taken to King Nebuchadnezzar, who will speak with him face to face. Then Zedekiah will be led away to Babylonia, where he will stay until I am finished with him. So if you people of Judah fight against the Babylonians, you will lose. I, the Lord, have spoken. Later, when I was in prison, the Lord said, Jeremiah, your cousin, Hananel, the son of your uncle, Shalem, will visit you. He must sell his field near the town of Anathoth. And because you are his nearest relative, you have the right and the responsibility to buy it and keep it in the family. Hanamel came, just as the Lord had promised, and he said, Please buy my field near Anathoth in the territory of the Benjamin tribe. You have the right to buy it, and if you do, it will stay in our family. The Lord had told me to buy it from Hanamel, and so I did. The price was 17 pieces of silver, and I weighed out the full amount on a scale. I had two copies of the bill of sale written out, each containing all the details of our agreement. Some witnesses and I signed the official copy, which was folded and tied, before being sealed shut with hot wax. Then I gave Hanamel the silver, and while he, the witnesses, and all the other Jews sitting in the courtyard were still watching, I gave both copies to Baruch, son of Neriah. I told Baruch that the Lord had said, Take both copies of this bill of sale, one sealed shut and the other open, and put them in a clay jar so they will last a long time. I am the Lord All-Powerful, the God of Israel, and I promise you that people will once again buy and sell houses, farms, and vineyards in this country. Jeremiah questions the Lord. Then I prayed, Lord God, you stretched out your mighty arm and made the sky and the earth. 
You can do nothing. You can do anything. I'm sorry. We can do nothing. You can do anything. You show kindness for a thousand generations, but you also punish people for the sins of their parents. You are the Lord all-powerful. With great wisdom, you make plans, and with your great power, you do all the mighty things you planned. Nothing we do is hidden from your eyes, and you reward or punish us as we deserve. You are famous because you worked miracles in Egypt, and you are still working them in Israel and in the rest of the world as well. You terrified the Egyptians with your miracles, and you reached out your mighty arm and rescued your people Israel from Egypt. Then you gave Israel this land rich with milk and honey, just as you had promised our ancestors. But when our ancestors took over the land, they did not obey you, and now you have punished Israel with disaster. Jerusalem is under attack, and we suffer from hunger and disease. The Babylonians have already built dirt ramps up to the city walls, and you can see that Jerusalem will be captured just as you said. So why did you tell me to get some witnesses and buy a field with my silver when Jerusalem is about to be captured by the Babylonians? The Lord explains about the field. The Lord explained, Jeremiah, I am the Lord God. I rule the world, and I can do anything. It is true that I am going to let King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonia capture Jerusalem. The Babylonian army is already attacking, and they will capture the city and set it on fire. The people of Jerusalem have made me angry by going up to the flat roofs of their houses and burning incense to Baal and offering wine sacrifices to other gods. Now these houses will be burned to the ground. The kings and the officials, the priests and the prophets, and everyone else in Israel and Judah have turned from me and made me angry by worshipping idols. Again and again I have tried to teach my people to obey me, but they refuse to be corrected. I am going to get rid of Jerusalem because its people have done nothing but evil. They have set up dis disgusting idols in my temple, and now it isn't a fit place to worship me. And they led Judah into sin by building places to worship Baal in Hinnom Valley, where they also sacrificed their sons and daughters to the god Molech. I have never even thought of telling them to commit such disgusting sins. Jeremiah, what you said is true. The people of Jerusalem are suffering from hunger and disease, and so the king of Babylonia will be able to capture Jerusalem. I am angry at the people of Jerusalem, and I will scatter them in foreign countries. But someday I will bring them back here and let them live in safety. They will be my people, and I will be their God. I will make their thoughts and desires pure. Then they will realize that for their own good and the good of their children, they must worship only me. They will even be afraid to turn away from me. I will make an agreement with them that they that they will never end, that it will never end, and I won't ever stop doing good things for them. With all my heart, I promise that they will be planted in this land once again. Even though I have brought disaster on the people, I will someday do all these good things for them. Jeremiah, when you bought the field, you showed that fields will someday be bought and sold again. You say that this land has been conquered by the Babylonians and has become a desert, emptied of people and animals. But someday, people will again spend their silver to buy fields everywhere in the territory of Benjamin, the region round, around Jerusalem, and the towns of Judah, and in the hill country, the foothills to the west, and the southern desert. Buyers and sellers and witnesses will sign and seal the bills of, the bills of sale for the fields. It will happen, because I will give this land back to my people. I, the Lord, have spoken. Amen. God's willing, tomorrow we come back. We're still on the book of Jeremiah, and we read chapter 33, which has two chapters. The Lord promises to give the land back to his people, and the Lord's wonderful promise. You all tell your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Tell them all about Father God, who gave his only begotten son, Yes. Higher, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Who gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to be the propitiation for our sins. You know, Jesus died on the cross for all of us. And the Father wants you to love Jesus Christ and honor him because it's he that's coming back. And when he come back, we better be ready. We better be ready.
Okay? Tell your loved ones you love them. And tell them about Father God, who gave his only begotten son, who died on the cross for all our sins. And if you have, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you will have life. Not only have it, have it more abundantly. Right? Glory to your holy name. Glory to your holy name, Father. Glory to your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you all to love the Lord. That's why I tell you the truth. And Father God loves you more. Our Father God says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. That is not something up for debate or discussion. That's something we all must do. So please do it. And remember, your neighbors are those near, nearby you who live next to you. You must love them as you love yourself. But your neighbors are also anywhere that you go. Those near you are your neighbors. Love them as you love yourself. And if you have any forgive, unforgiveness in your heart, let it go. Forgive. If you want your Father in heaven to forgive you and also answer your prayers. Because your prayers can be hindered if you, don't, if you have unforgiveness in your heart. All right? Please let it go. I don't care what they did. Let it go. Forgive them. All right? And pray for them. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. Children of all ages, youngest to oldest alike, God bless you. Bye-bye.